We recently had the chance to play the closed beta for the upcoming sandbox MMO Worlds Adrift and hang out with the developers on a guided tour of their world. We liked what we saw. Worlds Adrift is an ambitious project for such a small team as Bosa Studios, focused as it is on cobbling together airships from materials found scattered in a sky full of floating islands, each of which is designed entirely by players. So far though, the project looks as though it has its feet on solid ground. Once your little airship's airborne, you sail away to other islands, often through storm walls that serve as barriers between zones and learn knowledge that lets you build niftier toys. Just don't expect the ride to be smooth. It's all PvP enabled, so there's always a chance a bunch of pirates could fly in from another neighboring rock and steal your stuff. But it also delivers adventurous challenges even without the threats from other players. At one point during our developer guided session, the dev team tried to ram through one of the storm walls to enter another zone. And even with their massive developer made ship, they still lost engines and sails. At another point, the wind even knocked off the ship's compass, another item that's made by hand, and placed where players want it to go. And without the sense of direction, they found themselves on the same side of the wall they'd come from. Through it all, I saw impressive feats of cooperation, whether they were helping the pilot navigate or grappling off the sides of the ship to repair its increasingly battered parts. These moments work so well on account of Worlds Adrift's other elements. Despite its stylized, cartoony aesthetic, it's a world where decently realistic physics govern every action. It's also a truly persistent world that leaves a smashed detritus of wrecked ships where they fell forever, or at least until some enterprising builder cleans up the mess. Free of any quest or story, it's a world that's entirely shaped by the societies and economies players make for themselves. In fact, based on what I've seen, it comes perhaps closest to that elusive dream of a third-person action MMO that mimics the feel of EVE Online. And it's technically a survival game, focused heavily on cooperation between players. The ships here essentially function as your castle or keep in a survival game like Age of Conan, but the big draw in Worlds Adrift is that you're not forced to hang around the joint all the time in order to fend off invasions at 3 a.m. You take your home with you, so to speak, and add to it as necessary. Overall though, it's a rare survival game that's focused on the thrills of living rather than the threat of dying. It's not burdened, for instance, with the fussiness of constantly scrounging for food in order to keep yourself alive. Instead, you only have to eat when you need to recover from injuries, which Bosa tells me has the happy side effect of encouraging cooperation among players since they're not constantly in danger of kicking the bucket. After all, cooperation, even if it mainly amounts to honor among thieves, helps fuel the societies and resulting stories players are already making for themselves only a few weeks into the current closed beta. Among the most fascinating is the so-called TSA, which floats around policing sectors and finding any players who aren't carrying the proper passes. Or there's the Cardinal Guild, which makes up for Worlds Adrift's lack of maps by creating and disseminating maps of their own. There's even a bounty hunting guild that'll hunt down annoying players or their creations, for a price of course. We're more than a little excited to see how well it all comes together in its final form. This frankly is ambitious stuff, particularly for a studio whose key achievements until now include Surgeon Simulator 2013 and a game about a sentient slice of toast. Still, what we've seen so far proves the studio has its feet on solid ground and in a genre that's been adrift without good ideas for far too long. For more on Worlds Adrift, stick with IGN.